Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to talk about this topic today about home therapy. Um, but before that, I just want to give thanks uh, to Thinking, who actually recommended me to the organizing committee, who then gave me the platform to share. I also want to give thanks to the many uh, patients, their caregivers and their family members who have taught me so much so that I can share with you more about what we are doing as um, therapists in the home setting, in the community. So today, um, I'm going to talk very little. Uh, in fact, my patients and their family members will be teaching you and sharing with you more than me. All right. So some disclaimer. Okay. Uh, if you want to know more about me, uh, please take out your phone, scan the QR code. Okay, uh, but I'm just going to tell you about my story as a clinician starting in since 2011. So uh, I started off working in a community hospital, an in inpatient where I see the client for five days a week. Every day is one hour together with my OT partner for another one more hour. So a lot of times I, 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 I had joy seeing my patients improve. You know, and, and then at the end of one month, wow, they are going home. But I always wonder what happens when they go home. If they were only to come back to day rehab center for once a week for an hour, would that be enough? And in fact, I did see some of my patients who come back to visit me deteriorating. So when I moved over to DRC, I was a little bit skeptical. Um, but at the same time, I see very different um, scenarios. Uh, well, one is whereby, wow, you know, when the client uh, is discharged from a hospital, he was using a walking frame with moderate assistance. But when he comes to see me, he was walking in with an umbrella, independent. So I began to wonder, what is the magic about being at home? And then there will be another uh, kind of clients who will stay with the DRC for like months or even years. And that was when I started to ask myself, now what's going on? And therefore I moved into the community. I started to do home therapy and I realized there are many, um, it kind of confirmed my guess about psychosocial issues. And uh, now the question is, um, how do we tap on the spiritual aspect of the biopsychosocial spiritual model of health? And then question is, okay, how then does a homebound client gain access to a wide variety of allied health professionals? And what about those clients with neurodegenerative conditions who will never improve? Uh, what about those clients with end-stage organ failure or even cancer? How then do we you know, approach end of life care. All right, so um, this is the model. Um, and this is a recap of the individual aspects of it. Now in the subsequent slides, I'll be showing you uh, real case scenarios, my clients, okay? And some of the interventions that we have been doing. And I would like you to then assess which component of health we are targeting. How different is it compared to uh, intervention in a hospital setting, in an outpatient setting? Um, how do you think it will impact or make a difference in the rehab efficiency and cost effectiveness? Okay. So uh, before we begin, uh, let's just go through the fundamentals of home therapy. Our goals are quite different, all right? Um, so, but the very first uh, is, is to educate, um, to regulate expectation and to set a common goal with the client leading. Now, from now onwards, you won't hear me saying uh, patient anymore because they are my client. They are someone who directs the intervention, the one who directs the whole session or in fact, the whole journey, right? So after that, um, a lot of times within the first session, there will be a home routine. It can be for exercise or physical activity. 
Okay, then there will be a huge emphasis on caregiver training. Um, then the next step is really to look at whether or not they are home integrated safely, confidently, uh, with uh, modification done or not. And the final stage will be to integrate them back into their campo, in, back into their community support system. Okay. So a lot of times uh, in home therapy, the, the assessment starts uh, right from the time that I alight the bus or, and all the way to the lift landing to their doorstep into the house, to the places that they usually hang out, in the toilet, in the um, bedroom, anywhere, anywhere that they want to go, right? So um, yes, I may be a physiotherapist, um, but I do home assessment, I do home modification, and uh, work along with HDB for the EAST program to either install RAM, to install grab bus, or even to like have anti-sleep uh, treatment for the toilets. Now, this is a, a lady with a uh, hip replacement, right? So think, think, ladies and gentlemen, which aspects of health are we targeting here, all right? When you change something in their home environment with them inside, what would that do for them? How effective it is. So I would say um, whether or not someone is independent or totally bit down, there will always be something that the client will be able to help with or to do. But in the event that they are unable to do so, then this is where our caregiver training comes in, right? So once again, think, think about how different will it be when you do caregiver training in the hospital setting, in a mock-up area, compared to in their home where the clutter is, all right? Now, uh, for this gentleman, we were trying to increase his um, trunkal endurance in sitting. Um, but we had bonus because right in his room, there was a uh, lots of coins that he collected when he was young. And every one coin will spark a story, you know. And you will see this, his eyes will just brighten up. And usually he's someone who is like totally, you know, sleepy and always in bed. But that particular activity was something more than just a trunkal endurance training. All right, so um, Ito Gawandi once talked about everyone needing a loyalty, which is a form of like devotion, something that my elders need to wake up, you know, something that they can look forward to. Now for this lady, um, the day that we came out of the house, down the three steps, she was in tears. She was in tears when she saw her plant blossoming. And she said, the orchids are very beautiful. And subsequently for her, we actually installed a customized ram so that they can come up. Right? So think, is it just a ram? Right. What are we doing for her health? Which components of health are we talking about here? Then you can take a look at yourself also. Relax. Lean back. Mm. So there's a gap in between the shoulder here. Okay. But when the machine is on, we use the muscles to pull up the whole hand so that the it doesn't get sublux. The shoulder joint don't get sublux. Because mm -hmm. if it sublux too much, then you dislocate. Yeah. So it can be done like every day when we sit down to watch a TV or play games. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What you just saw is just something that we do on a daily basis in home therapy, whereby I no longer give exercise sheets. Uh, I will actually get the client's handphone and video down whatever home activity I want them to do. And usually it's no more than three activity. And when I leave, I'm very confident that they will be able to refer back to that video or even their caregivers, right? So that they are doing the right thing.
你表演了现在，啊 ，A 嘛 ，A 嘛 ，aim for your dining table 啊，啊 ，go go go， 啊 ，good left right left right go。啊 ，parking parking， 就是 hand parking。<笑> okay。所以 home therapy， we really focus on， 啊、uh, ，the functional aspects of， you know， the ICF model。It's no longer just about an impairment。There is no such thing as being a perfectionist in their home anymore。Yeah。And then the second big component really is about their basic ADLs。And then you'll find that、um, for the IADLs, it will overlap between the home integration and the community integration component. But this is where, ladies and gentlemen, I think we have a lot to learn from our OT colleagues, whereby we use ADL as very、uh, meaningful task to engage an, a client in their home. Right. So a lot of times,、um, you'll be surprised the kind of impact. That you have, not just、uh, for the client, but their whole family. You know, when you when you treat one client, you are actually treating the whole family unit. And in this case,、um, you know, at at times like this, you know, showering is a big issue. Whereby we actually need to activate the assistive technology fund to get a special commode chair that can actually tilt in space so that he can enjoy a good bath. The first day that he Had a bath.、Um, was a combined session with my OT colleague, and he cannot talk. But when you bid goodbye to him, and when you see the stream of tears, you will know what he means. Yeah. Okay, come go. Do it, run, do it, run, do it, run. Yeah, you just look in front and then you just walk. Yeah. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Doing very well. So a lot of times people ask me, you know, they say, "Hey, Pesha, aren't you, you know, like lonely when you go on home therapy, running or the whole island by yourself?" And I will tell you this: home therapy is like that solo backpacking. You are never alone. And in this scenario, I've that、uh, I've got a vendor coming in. You know, to bring a new piece of technology into this client's home, you know, bring a little bit of hope into this family's life, and you'll be surprised. There are many, many vendors out there who are willing to lend a hand when you reach out to them. This is also more and more fast. So the very least that I can do for such a supportive family is really to work my schedule around theirs. Another big advantage that we have in home therapy is really to work. Uh, according to the client's、um, preference, but also ability. So for this lady, she sweats a lot in the day, and she gets dehydrated very easily. So we just pick the night lah, which is much cooler, and it also integrates her back into her community. And if it surprises you, in home therapy, you don't need a lot of equipment. In fact, you can find facilities around the neighborhood to do your therapy. Ah, look who's using the legs. Hey, this is a cycle, cycle, cycle. Hello, cycle. Yes. Let's see who touches the wall first. Who will win the race? Who will win the race? Come on, keep going. Keep going. Whoever touches the wall wins. I see. And all the times、uh, when there are three generations under one roof, you'll find that we have can be so much more fun and meaningful to the elder and. Oh, look who's using the legs. Hey, this is. A I 
I do not know whether you can tell uh, if this client has aphasia, um, but he usually replies in a, a word or by nodding his head. Now, you tell me, home therapy, which component of health does it target for such an individual? Yes. Hi, Chow Chow Pango. Ah, I can't go. Okay, very good. So in home therapy, a lot of times sky is the limit, really. Uh, it's really up to your creativity, right? And also your preference. So in the last component, we talk about community integration, whereby we go out. Sometimes it's very much needed when our elders need a breather um, from the family, or even to connect with the, the flowers in the garden or the community cat, or even the whole kampong now says we will go, hey, what happened to you? I haven't seen you for a long time. You know, just by asking that question, they feel belonged. They feel belong to that community. So once again, what are we targeting here for health? This client couldn't wait to go swimming. He was asking his family members to go swimming. So my question to you is, is he really lazy? Is there really such a term as a lazy patient when everybody wants to improve? Or is it because the task that you select for the client is not motivating and meaningful enough? So once again, what component of health are we targeting here now? For someone with low self-esteem, perhaps hand-holding them is the very first step to the leap of faith that they need to go back to their life without you. And a lot of times, we have very difficult conversations. Uh, yes, it may be difficult, but it is very heartwarming at the same time where we talk about feelings about um, dying. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my colleagues who are working in the hospice care. Thank you so much for making the remaining time of their life that meaningful and of high quality. So what do we need to prepare someone to transit, right? Um, I won't share too much, because I think the other four speakers are touching on them. But I just want to highlight to you that within four sessions, you can see a big uh, improvement, right? You can do all three components, home routine, home integration, and community integration within four sessions. Of course, that depends on the client's uh, condition as well. But four is the magic word here. So what can we do to support this transition? I think first and foremost, for us clinicians, we need to be aware. We need to be curious to find out more. We need to want to communicate with our colleagues in different settings. We need to start to think about what's transdisciplinary, right? Are we willing to share? Are we willing to train and even assess, right? And, you know, no matter what kind of obstacles there are, challenges there are as a clinician, as long as we know who we're working for at the end of the day, I think everything will be worth it. Now, this iron triangle here is something that we keep on hearing. And I would say that for clients, home therapy is cost-effective, right? And, and efficient. Um, but at the same time, uh, this will pose challenges for service providers, for hospitals and organizations. And the very big problem here is cost. Everyone will tell you, ah, oh, home therapy is a bleeding unit, yeah. But I think perhaps it is time that we start to review how we calculate the numbers and to think about more innovative ways to overcome the cost issue here. So 
I hope by now, uh, after looking at the different components of health, you will be able to tell for yourself how relevant home therapy is. All right. We started off um, sending health medical teams to Kampong, and I think we can do better with technological advancement. And with that, I end my talk. But if you have any queries or you are willing to uh, have the discussion with me, please feel free to contact me. But now, we bid goodbye. Take care.